Hello friends, we are still not employed by Fang Company, so let's not stop lead coding till we get there. Yesterday, I had a very interesting technical interview with not a Fang Company, but a Fang-like company. It was a very powerful bank. It was Goldman Sachs and it is known for its very tough technical interviews. They also pay really good and they have really great benefits. So I have decided to break down this video in three parts. In the first part, I'm going to talk about that. How was my experience? What were the questions asked? What were my answers that I gave them? What were the follow up questions? In the second part, I'm going to say that uh, how was the overall experience of the interview? How was the feel? How confident am I and what are my expectations? And in the end, I am going to discuss that what are the things I could have done better? Like why? Uh, like it is really important to retrospect on yourself after you are done with an interview to make sure that you can improve in upon next one uh, or you know at least that what were the things done right and what were the things done wrong okay so the interview was a telephonic interview and it was the first round of an interview uh, interview lasted for almost one hour and ten minutes two lead code medium problems were asked the first question and uh, let's let's try to understand the problem statement so this first question is actually very similar to a lead code problem called high five and uh, I have already solved this video so you can check it out over here and uh, apart from this one uh, and there was some variation to this problem so essentially we were given a 2d string array that contained a student name and grades and we need to determine that amongst all the students and all the grades which was the maximum average grade that have been received amongst all students and uh, we were given the condition that there could be one or more than one grades can, uh, given per student so if we take a look at the input in the input over here we have three uh, variables uh, we have three students Rachel Monica and Phoebe yes I am a big friends fan so don't roast me over it and uh, if we look at the total uh, the grades received so rachel received 100 grades in one subject and then rachel again received 50 grades in the another subject so uh, for rachel the total grades was 150 and uh, that uh, that was for two subjects so if we calculate the average the average turns out to be 75 which is this one uh, same goes for phoebe phoebe received uh, 80 grades for one subject and 60 for the other one uh, which means for phoebe the total was 140 and uh, for two subjects so her average was 70 and for monica we are only given just one uh, input and that is value number 95 so for monica the average was actually 95 divided by 1 so 95 and because this was the highest average received so that's why in this case we returned uh, monica as an answer now the thing is how did i come up with this approach and what could be my potential uh, what could be my strategy so initially I started by saying that okay uh, from the given input array we need two things we need the student name or student ID and for that corresponding ID we need the uh, total average for uh, per subject so uh, my first thought was to create a hash map and inside the hash map we are going to store uh, two items so as a key we are going to store the uh, uh, value of all the student names and as the value we are going to have a list and inside the list we are going to have two nodes so it, for the two nodes my aim was that in the first node we would have the average and in the second node we would have the number of uh, number of subjects uh, so why um, this was my strategy because we need to find that what is the uh, overall average per student receives and the moment a student gets a grade so suppose uh, Rachel initially gets a grade 100 so over here the average would be 100 and the total number of subjects so far would be 1 now next Rachel receives a grade of 70 so over here I am going to do 100 plus 70 divided it by uh, incrementing this nums value so this would be 2 so 1 uh, 1 170 by 2 I would be doing and then whatever the average would be I would be posting it inside this average folder so at any given moment in the hash map we would always have the average value the counter question for this one was that why do we need to calculate the rolling average for every single student because what would happen in a scenario where uh, suppose we are only given just three students but we are given 1 million grades so what would happen is that uh, every for uh, all the 1 million entries that we are we are going to insert inside this hash map we would have to do rolling average and that is go that is a very time consuming operation because division takes more time so the second solution that i thought was and which uh, interviewer also like this that uh, over here uh, we are still going to use a list 
and inside the list we are going to store the two nodes but in the first node we are only going to store some of all the subjects that we have calculated so far so over here initially suppose rachel received a grade 100 so first sum would be 100 and number of subjects would be one now second the rachel received the grade of uh, let's say 50 so over here we would do 100 plus 50 so over here the value would be 150 and number of subjects would be two so at the end we would have a list like this that for rachel uh, it would be 150 and 2 uh, for phoebe it would be 140 and 2 and for monica it would be 95 and 1 because monica only had one input and uh, that was 95 and then we would simply iterate over this uh, hash map again and during the second iteration all we need to do is for every single student we will calculate that what is the average they are getting uh, so for rachel the average is uh, 75 and also we are going to have a maximum parameter uh, and we are going to initialize it to zero and every for every single student whenever we are calculating the average we are going to see that whether it is the current maximum average or not so first of all uh, when we calculate the average for rachel which comes out to be 75 we would update this value for max to value number 75 and then we calculate the uh, then we again calculate for phoebe so this has to be p and not r uh, so for phoebe uh, the average would be 70 so we check that okay the, does this average is greater than the already existing average we have no it, it is not so we are not going to do anything with this one and then we are going to calculate the average for monica which is going to be 95 and again we check okay this is greater than 75 so we will update the maximum average re received so far and that would be 95 and this would be our solution so in the end we simply have to return this 95 value and this solution works perfectly fine and my conceptual uh, explanation was really good uh, there were no issues with that uh, the problem came when i was actually coding it and a uh, couple of problems I, I i identified and that was totally my fault because i'm i suck at coding essentially and uh, this was like one of my first experiences of giving such a good interview because the interviewer was really nice and uh, the first mistake i did was over here inside this hash map i tried to create a linked list and i was not able to find a way to how to enter these two values inside the linked list so the next thing i did was uh, rather than doing this i actually uh, used an array so it becomes things uh, array of size 2 and uh, they, that become a little bit more easier to do and one of the worst mistakes i did and uh, i would talk about it later in the end section uh, but yeah uh, and for this one if we calculate the time and space complexity so essentially the time complexity in this case would be big o of n because we will have to iterate over the entire given input and the, for the space complexity it will also be big o of n because we will have to create this additional hash map to calculate all the averages and uh, overall, I, I thought interviewer was happy. I could have done better in, in the coding part. Now let's talk about the second question. So the second question has been something related to intervals. And uh, as you must have seen that recently, I've been doing a lot of interval problems. And uh, I didn't know that it was going to help me out in this interview. And I would say that this was a combination of intervals and graph, both of them. Both of them. And uh, basically, let's try to understand the problem statement. So we are given some random intervals. And we are also told that all the intervals have a starting position and ending position and the ending position of one interval would be the starting position of some other interval. And now we need to return all the intervals in correct order. So if we try to understand the example over here, we are given some input like, okay, this is five to seven. Now, if we see the ending value of this one, this seven, uh, it's actually a starting value of this another interval called seven to nine. Now, even for 9, if we see the ending value, it is also a starting value for another variable 9 to 12. And for 12, this is 12 to 15. And for 15, this is actually 15 to 29. And 29 is actually 29 to 34. And uh, originally, this would be the first element 1 to 5. Why it would be the first element? Because the starting point of this one is not ending point of some other variable. Apart from this starting point, all the other variables actually have the condition where their ending point becomes the starting point of some other variable so this was a very key part and i would i would come up to it that why this was important so 
if this this sort of input was given we are need we need to return an output where which is where everything is in line so if you see over here this is 1 to 5 5 to 7 7 to 9 9 to 12 12 to 15 15 to 29 and 29 to 34 so everything becomes in just like one order and we are okay with that the first thing that comes to mind is that okay if we sort this given input uh, everything works out and we can solve this problem well that could work but the thing is sorting takes big o of n log n time and we wanted to solve this problem in big o of n times and uh, solving this pro this can be solved in big o of n times so let me show you that what was my approach uh, first of all i i thought that okay for this given problem uh, the the thing we need to do is that at every single moment we need to be very fast in looking up that what is the ending point of one value and what is the starting point of one variable uh, because over here suppose this this is 5 7 so we knew though know that next interval has to start from value number 7 so if we wanted to find that in this given input in the current form we would do like big o of n work just to do that and so for all the elements it would take big o of n square time complexity but our aim is to complete complete this in big o of n so first thing i did was i created a hash map now inside the hash map uh, the first value was i put down the starting values as key so as the start uh, start point as the key and for that particular start point i added end point as the uh, uh, like end point as the value in the, inside the given hash map now the next thing we need we needed to do is that we would at any point suppose we start randomly so let's say that in this given input we start things randomly and what would happen in in that random order is that suppose the first element we pick suppose that is 12 to 15 right so over here let's say the value is 12 and 15 then uh, for an, some another key okay this is 29 and 34 and then uh, there is 9 and 12 and then there is 15 and 29 and blah 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 we are given some values like this okay uh, let's say though so in in the hash map things becomes really easy for us to calculate now initially we started this value then we uh, we know that okay 15 so this value is 15 now we know that we need to find the next element that starts at 15 so inside the hash map we can quickly look look that up but that okay there is this entry that starts at 15 and its end value is 29 so let's just keep a note that all the intervals we have found so far so first we found 12 to 15 then we found uh, 15 to 29 and uh, then from this 15 to 29 we found the 29 to 34 okay so at any given moment because we find this node starting at 15 we were able to uh, start over here and then we will we reached all the way to end now suppose rather than this starting at 12 to 15 suppose we started at uh, 5 to 7 so if we were if we had started this at 5 to 7 what would be the solution so okay let me add few entries to our hash map so for 5 there is a 7 and uh, even for 7 there is a 9 okay i have all the other entries so suppose we initially start at 5 to 7 so let's just say 5 to 7 there is one value now from 5 to 7 we can get 7 to 9 easily so we, we will get 7 to 9 and uh, from 7 to 9 we will get uh, uh, the value 9 to 12 easily so we will get 9 to 12 and from 9 to 12 we will get 20, 12 to 15 so over here we already had calculated 12 to 15 basically so at any given moment at any time if we start at any value we are guaranteed that from that particular value we would be able to find the path towards the end value right so this makes things much more easier the question is our aim is to find the entire thing the whole thing so what would be the most ideal scenario like the most ideal scenario would be that at any given moment if we are able to find out that what is the start point and the moment we find out that hey this is the start point then all we need to do is just based on the start point we simply need to traverse over this given hash map and our output would be generated automatically because we are guaranteed that for every single interval that ends at some point suppose this one is at 9 then 9 has to be a start point of some other interval the only case where this is not true is in the first scenario where the starting point is not the ending point of some other interval so now our question becomes that how do we find that uh, tune up like how do we find that starting point so the first thing we did was uh, so we will have to generate the hash map yeah, like that's a given 
uh, but my proposed solution was that with the with this hash map uh, we will also keep track of uh, the uh, ending values of all the other elements uh, because we already have the starting values of all the other elements inside this given hash map right as as part of the key so i propose that we create another hash set and inside this hash set we keep track of the end end variables and once we have filled up this hash map like during filling up this hash map we would also fill up this hash set as well so suppose over here we found that first entry is 12 15 so over here we would create an entry called 15 then over here we found an entry called 29 34 so over here we would add an entry called 34 and so on and so forth we will keep on adding all the values so inside this hash set we would have one the number of values will always be same between hash map and hash set but there would be one value that is different and that would be that inside this hash set this end value 34 would be present but that 34 would not be present as the start value because 34 is the last value inside the given uh, input and also inside this hash set we would have the key starts at value number one uh, so for this one to five entry we would have a key value number one but we would not have this value inside the given hash set so all we need to do is that after we are done filling up this hash map and hash set we will have to iterate over both of them and compare the keys and we only need to check that whether the given key exists inside the hash map but not inside the hash set and that element becomes our starting point and then all we need to do is just start with that position and we'll start with one and five in this case and then we will be able to generate the entire sequence like five to seven and seven to nine and uh, all the way up till up until the end point and this solution would work uh, what is the time and space complexity so the time complexity in this case is going to be big o of n because initially we will have to start fill up this hash map and hash set and for both of them it's gonna take big o of n time and then we will have to iterate over both of them to find that what is the differing element and that would also take big o of n time and then we will have to start iterating over this given hash map from the starting element and that would also take big o of n time so overall we can say that the time complexity was big o of 3n but we can generalize it to be big o of n now in terms of space complexity the space complexity would be big o of n as well because we are storing this hash map and hash set so uh, typically we are storing like 2n elements but we can just generalize it to be big o of n so uh, interviewer was happy with uh, both of my approaches everything went uh, well in that regard what are the things i felt overall about the interview and how was the behavior of the interviewer like uh, if i say the the interviewer was really professional like he was really well trained interviewer i i have nothing but good things to say about him that uh, he was completely professional and uh, at any given moment like uh, he gave me a lot of hints and uh, he was quite helpful also they directly cut to chase they don't uh, mess around and uh, they don't have anything else to say they don't uh, say that okay how's the weather over there or uh, tell me something about yourself or blah 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 no Im immediately th when the interviews interview started they just told me that okay this is the first problem start working on it this is the second problem start working on it and then we just solve that uh, the third thing I would put in uh, put in perspective is that uh, the person had really good knowledge of all almost all the da data structure and algorithm concepts. Uh, they were really clear for that person because I felt that at some point his questions were really intriguing and uh, all very insightful. So uh, I have nothing but respect for that. Also, the next thing I would like to say is that regarding the interview, uh, he was actually nice enough that uh, my first uh, to solve my first question it took me almost 45 minutes and uh, to explain my second question it uh, it took me almost like 15 minutes so my 16 minutes were up and uh, still the person gave me additional 10 minutes uh, telling me that okay if you want you can use this 10 minutes to code up the solution for the second problem but i was not able to do it like i I suck at coding. I have to do a lot of work on that. Uh, understood. So yeah, that was my overall experience. I would say that okay, the their interview process was really fine, and uh, I I have nothing but to, but good things to say about uh, the overall feel of the interview.
first thing I did wrong, I in my opinion was that uh, I told you that I for the uh, first problem, I tried to put it in the hash uh, map uh, and uh, I tried to use like a uh, rolling average. So that was wrong and uh, I should not have been doing the rolling. I should have been more careful that okay, division every single time for million entries is going to take more time rather than summation. So I think I could have improved upon that. Now second thing I think I did wrong was uh, that I made lot of coding mistakes. So and uh, immediately like uh, the interviewer was generous enough to help me out but still yeah the mistakes were mistakes I should have been more more careful I think it was just the normal nervousness of the interview but still and uh, the the biggest mistake I found was that I was not able to cast the int value to an integer and inside the hash map like this was disastrous this was literally disastrous. This was like the worst thing that I could have done. Like uh, this is a very element elementary Java uh, courses and um, I I did not do it well. So it, it hurts me to say it, but it is what it is. And uh, whatever happens with the interview result, I'll, I'll keep you guys posted. Originally, I was planning to make a video about meeting rooms too. It was a, it is a very important, very interesting lead code premium problem. That problem has been asked by ton, tons of different companies. So, but the, I, I decided that I think I should feel my experience. And this was like first step towards my Fang journey. I know in the Fang G does not stand for Goldman Sachs, but still I, I feel that Goldman Sachs interview was really good. Uh, and uh, yeah, it was a good experience.